بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد The trappings of this life are immense and intense and it's up for up to the believer to do their best not to get trapped in the dunya and this is what the salaf of this ummah what they called the people to meaning to avoid being caught up in this life using this thinking that this life is eternal for example we see many many examples in this time in this day and age i think the level of materialism is on a whole striking strikingly different and more intense level than it was in the past and the, what, there's always been greedy people people who craved and worshiped their desires and worshiped wealth and property but what we see today with people killing themselves over losing wealth with people taking the lives easily of of other uh, of, of others disregarding the lives and the sacredness of life due to their desire for wealth acquiring wealth people killing their own parents killing and taking the lives of their own mother and their own father in order to attain wealth and status which is temporary as we only have a limited amount of time in this dunya and the believer meaning the one who's practicing the one who's from ahli iman and they're taking their iman seriously they're striving to increase their iman they're doing those things to protect them protect themselves from indulging in the dunya so much then they are the ones following the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who said alayhi salatu wasalam a dunya sijin mu'min with jannat al-kafir that this life is a prison for the believer and the paradise for the disbeliever the believer although they can enjoy many things many of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation but they can't they're not unrestrained they're not without bounds and limited and limits whereas the one who disbelieves in Allah this is their this is is their their paradise this is it so if they lived a nice life here they're 40 they're 50 they're 60 70 maybe 80 maybe 100 years if they're really lived long lives then that's what they got that's what they attained and that's it and they here after they're bankrupt nothing nothing to benefit them in the hereafter no matter what they did because they died on shirk and kufr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Allah la yaghfiru an yushrik bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha that verily Allah does not forgive that you associate a partners with him but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases subhanahu wa ta'ala shirk is unforgivable if you die upon shirk without making tawbah without repenting to Allah then then you're finished in the hellfire forever wa iyadan billah min dhalika so the mu'min takes this life very seriously realizing this life is limited however the the one who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa adhar al-hayat ad-dunya fa inna al-jahim hi al-ma'wa that this person prefers this life over the hereafter and verily jahannam the hellfire is their destination that's their resting place and there's no rest there wa iyadan billah min dhalika but the believer strives in this life 
and they prohibit themselves from indulging and following their vain desires, following, following their desires and, and co letting their desires control them. You know, restraining themselves, restraining the things, you know, they, they want to look at things, but they restrain themselves. They want to indulge in certain activities, they restrain themselves. They want to say certain things, being involved in certain activities, but they restrain themselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the jannah to heal matwa. Then for them, because they restrained their desires, Jannah is their, their resting place. That's their abode. And may Allah bless us to be from Ahl Jannah. And in another hadith of the Prophet wasallam, I've mentioned countless times this hadith of Nabiina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he said alayhi salatu wa salam, Inna dunya halawata khadira. Wa inna allaha subhanahu mustakhlifukum fi. The Prophet وسلم, said that verily this dunya is like a beautiful garden or it's like a sweet fruit. And verily, Allah establishes you in this dunya. As we know, mankind is established here. They can do good or they can do evil. They can continue to start wars and, and manufacture diseases, plague one another, harm one another, destroy one another, destroy one another's honor, or they can do good and then call each other to good and righteousness. Allah has established this here. In Allah mustakhlafukum fi. Fayandru kayfa ta'malu any watches to see what you'll do. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although he has full knowledge of what we have done, what we will do and what our potential is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hu ala kulli shay'in qadir. Hu ala kulli shay'in alim. Wa huwa hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows all things. And all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has full knowledge of everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَتَقُوا الدُّنْيَا وَتَقُوا النِّسَى The Prophet Ali after the salatu wa sallam said, Fear the dunya and fear the women. For verily, for in the awl of fitna bani Israel kana fi nisa. For verily, the first trial that befell the children of of Israel was the women, the fitna of the women. That men are inclined towards women, and when you think about it, one of the greatest trials that we face as men is being tested with lowering our gaze which relates to the women with restraining our, our hands and our private parts and so forth which relates to the women not meaning women are negative no meaning that this is a difficult test for us men because of our desires because of our inclination our inclination towards the women Allah has put that innate love, that innate desire to procreate and to cohabit, cohabit, uh, to, to have relations and what have you. Allah has given us that. But how we exercise it, do we exercise it in a halal fashion? Or do we take another path? That's the test. That the first test of the children of Israel was related to the women. They were tested as we were tested. So we don't want that to be a destruction for us. So be cautious 
of the trials and tribulations of the dunya. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those who are careful and those who are obedient to him and those who practice his deen in a manner that pleases him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.